Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from North Light Images. In this video, I'm going to try and address a question I get asked quite often, and that is, should I take up film photography? Now, I have a somewhat vested interest in this, in that uh, I'm a professional photographer. I shoot digitally. Um, for me, film is not something that's viable from a business point of view. However, that's not what people are asking about. They're saying, you know, I fancy something different. Um, you know, should I have a go at film? Now, if you're of my generation, you probably learnt photography with film. So you've got experience being out and say, well, yeah, I've been there, done that, tried that. Now I'm doing something different. Well, that's, that's fair enough. Um, I was also reading an article just the other day, um, and these occur every so often when magazines are short of copy, and uh, I want to do some advertising linked presumably with second-hand sellers of cameras. And uh, this one announced, uh, in strident tones, the popularity of film is seeing a meteoric rise. Well, yes, uh, maybe it is, but from what it was 20 years ago, it dropped to such a tiny amount of the photography market that any significant rise is bound to be meteoric. Um, you're starting from such a low base. But aside from that, um, what reasons might you want to have a go at doing film? Now, I'm not going to go through lots of details about how to shoot film. There are lots of people cover that, lots of people do film and things like that. But this is for somebody who has some digital photography experience and is thinking, well, I fancy something a bit different. My real reason is to say, make sure you do it for the right reasons and reasons that you'll actually get a benefit from. So, what reasons are there to try? Well, the cameras are relatively cheap. Certainly, you can still find 35mm cameras. Um, the, um, you can find them still in charity shops here. Um, so, next to nothing, you'll pick one up. You don't know that it's going to work particularly well. And one of the problems is um, you, you can't get basic film cameras repaired anymore. There just aren't any parts for them. Now, there are better 35mm cameras about. Um, I still have my Olympus OM2s and uh, other Olympus kit. In fact, there's an Olympus lens on this EOS RP that I use for shooting these videos. Um, and it's one that I bought back in the 1980s. It's a fully manual lens and it's just very easy to set uh, for, for that. Who knows, maybe one day I'll go to some proper video kit, but uh, not yet a while anyway. So the cameras you can pick up relatively cheaply. Uh, the film itself is nowhere as cheap as it used to be, relatively speaking. And the real difference I notice is that it is much more difficult to get film processed these days. It's not impossible in, by any means at all. Lots of people are starting to offer doing film. But you used to be able to take film almost anywhere and get it processed. Uh, there were professional labs in most cities. Uh, there was one I used to use here in Leicester for getting film developed if I needed stuff doing. Um, that's long gone. So you're either going to do it yourself, and I'll come back to the do-it-yourself aspect of this in a, in a bit, or you're going to send it off. So you've got a cheap, you know, cheap camera, you've, got some, you've shot some film and whatever. The real thing to see is what challenges are you taking from this film? Now... Most people, when they take up stuff, they're looking for something to do. They're looking for, say, typical, some form of challenge. Is it a creative challenge in that you want to make some different looking photos? You want to create photographs that, by the means they're taken, have a different look about them. Well, that's, that's fair enough. I'm going to say not many people stick to that. What about the challenge of learning new skills. Here we come down to what has always been both a positive and negative aspect of photography. Learning new skills, great. I try and do it all the time. It's my job. I try and keep up to date. I used to, years ago, have photography as a hobby and I used to experiment and do things then. It was about learning skills. In a way, it was learning craft skills. 
the I did this feel of things. Certainly working in the darkroom gave you that. Uh, less so I found the actual photography side of it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a popular thing to learn the new skills. Now, I come back to this one as well, but I'm going to suggest that a lot of people like to concentrate on learning new skills because it saves them having to think too much about the photographic aspects of things. Um, never mind the subject matter, look at the quality of my negatives. Look at these prints, aren't they really good quality? Yeah, that takes you so far. And then at a point, and this is a problem some people perhaps find with digital. I've learned how to do it. The photos aren't getting any better. Well, I've, I've covered this in lots of other things, suggesting that, you know, the creative aspects of photography is the difficult bit. But anyway, as I said, I did film. Uh, for a long while. This particular image here is one I took in the 1980s, a black and white shot. I look at it and I can see masses of grain in it. I really like the picture. Um, I could probably add grain like that in, um, you know, to a digital image. But I happen to know this was shot on film. I probably still got the negative somewhere. In fact, I almost certainly have because I file these things away. So that's a picture. My first experience for digital was actually scanning these negatives. And it was at that point where I could darkroom, print things, do make prints and that, and it can be really slow doing it. It's not something you can just rattle off a few pictures if you've got a darkroom to set up. You need to set it up. You need to get things to the right temperature. When you're finished, you need to clean it up. That's, that's the bit that yeah, I never really challenged, you know, appealed to me that much for, for that side. My first real get into digital was actually shooting on film, learning to scan film, and then learning to print, process the files and edit and print digitally. And that's what a lot of my Photoshop um, key skills probably come from my time in the darkroom in learning how to change tonality, how to adjust things, all the kinds of stuff that you could do quite readily in Photoshop. Many of these could be done in, a, in, in the darkroom, but it took quite a lot of effort to learn it. It comes back to that thing, I'm learning a craft skill. I'm learning a skill in the guise of creating photos. Now, I realized after a while that just shooting film, scanning it, then doing work on the computer and printing it, produced more consistent, better results than I was getting in the darkroom actually doing prints and things. This is just for black and white, by the way. But it's that move away from the film. What was, what was I using the film for? Was I using film there because I wanted to explore the creativity of film? No, I was using film because digital didn't really exist at the time. Well, it did. It was very expensive. It was very low resolution in comparison. So I'm talking, you know, 20 years ago um, and things are changing a bit. I first started scanning film in the late 90s. It's why I have so many articles on the Northlight website relating to black and white digital photography, because it was a new thing then. So that's how I got into that. But when I look at you know, bigger quality film, a lot of people say, well, what about medium format? Now here I have a range of medium format kit. This is a Mamaya 645 medium format kit. This is one here, it has a film back on it. The film back here is a 135 one, so this takes 35 mil film, so you can shoot 35 mil film. There is a, uh, another film back for that, and I've got loads of these. Um, and there is a medium format film back. You think, well, what's the use of these film backs? Well, you can have different films in it, and you can swap between them, because the film backs have a slide in front of them that blocks off the film. So you put this on the back of the camera and there's one fitted on here at the moment. You then take the slide out, you expose some photos, put the slide back in and there's an interlock system to make it difficult for you to mess up. Not impossible, but difficult for you to mess up. And you end up uh, taking pictures on whatever films. You could have one with color in, one with black and white, one with 35 mil, one with 220 size, one with 120 size film. It purely depends on what you want. 
Similarly, um, this one here also had, um, had a, I've got a power winder for it. If you really want to burn through your film quickly, just hold this button down and it will take lots of pictures. Um, the old motor drive, the manual uh, setting on the side of the camera, you advanced film and cock shutter and everything by just doing it manually, or you can do it with a battery. So there we go, very nice bit of kit. Um, I've got lots of this stuff. And if I'm honest, it's never ever gonna get used again. I occasionally look at it and think, oh, should I get some film and do it? And then I think, it's a lot of palaver to go through, just to make a point, just to show I can still use film. Now, if anyone's interested in all of this, drop me a line via Northlight. I'm in the UK, by the way, so yeah, just and so. Um, it doesn't include all the lenses I've got. And the reason it doesn't include all the lenses I've got is because I have things like this. This is the Tilt Rocker um, from Photodiox. Photo it's um, an adapter for M645 lenses to Canon RF, and it gives me tilt and shift. Uh, these lenses, this is a 35mm lens here. Um, these lenses work really well on the modern mirrorless cameras with adapters. So whereas I have a big box full of all the film kit, the lenses, a couple of them live regularly in my camera bag. So, um, but um, that's medium format. If you want to get into that, it's a little bit more expensive, but it does have a nice feel to it. And you will still, if you take something, a camera out like this, and this has got the, um, the uh, auto exposure, uh, pentaprism, uh, what type of prism is it? But anyway, it's a prism finder. The viewfinder on this is excellent. If you've not used medium format kit before, the viewfinder is superb. You can take that off and you can put a normal viewer as the flip up magnifying glass for it. You can get used to focusing uh, and composing your images the wrong way around. Now, that actually can help your composition, but that's another matter altogether. But anyway, there's film gear. Great. You know, um, knock yourself out. Learn how to use it, because it is quite a tough to learn to use this kit effectively. Um, take some real, genuine skills. And there we come back to why you might be wanting to have a go with film. Perhaps you want to try something different. Perhaps it's a technical side. Perhaps you've even, and this one, I've been asked over the years regularly, people say this, digital is just too easy. Well, my own thought is that if you're finding digital photography too easy, you're not trying hard enough. Um, all of the creative things you can do, all of the limitations, if you want to limit yourself to what you do, you can take out a small memory card with you and only allow yourself one day's shooting on a small capacity memory card. If you want to make, think about making every shot count, as you do have to do on film, as I said, the motor drive thing here on that, this will whiz through an entire roll of film quite quickly um, to not that much advantage generally. Um, it, it's convenient more than anything. Um, I think I quite, when I use this, I quite like the mechanical winding on. I'm not doing high speed work, so it's, you know, it's, it's a nice, nice bit of kit for that. Nice add on, but you know, would I have got it? Probably not for, for general use. But anyway, as I said, other things about why people might want film, uh, they don't like the look of digital. Well, apart from the fact that they can never accurately define the look of digital, um, what I would say is if you find the look of digital limiting in some way, then that is your fault, that is your limitation you're looking at, and you just haven't explored things enough. There is so much software, there are so many, all the lenses you can do. I mean, you can use these lenses, as I say, on a, on a modern camera. All of the stuff you can do, there's loads of it you can easily do. You really don't need it. I say, too easy, wrong. Digital look, find a different way of processing your, uh, processing your images. If you want an easy solution, then obviously, yes, film, you have it developed, it automatically has a different look. But much like this image here, and this is, is a film one with grain and everything else in it, and all the imperfections that I expect from film, dust and, and scratches and marks on the negatives, 
yeah, that's great. If you want to go there, go there. But you can do that digitally as well. Uh, there is no reason necessarily. We come back to that skills bit of actually just the sheer fun of doing it. Now, I'm not knocking the sheer fun of doing it because I enjoy this uh, an awful lot. I have tons of gear that I just take out to experiment with just because I think I can. Um, why not, if you want to have a quick go at this, uh, you don't need a darkroom, just uh, get your film, get it scanned uh, and learn to print it. Um, it's a hybrid process and one of the things I would say, and this is, as I have suggested this as a reason for people for having a go with film, is shoot some film, learn to scan it or get it scanned for you, then learn the editing and the printing to make prints digitally. Now, if you want to go the whole hog and do it in a dark room, by all means. Um, I have no desire anymore for the smell of dark room chemicals and your fingers smelling a bit funny after you've been in the dark room for more than an hour or two, even after you've washed it. It just seems, yeah, yeah the chemicals are not good for you either. So, um, yeah, these days I'd be even less inclined to set up a physical dark room, not without an awful lot of health and safety uh, stuff behind it, keeping things clean, well ventilated, etc. But the whole point, scan your film, Learn how to edit it. You learn about curves, mast adjustments, or dodging and burning as you would in the darkroom. And then you print them digitally. And what I would say is when you go back to digital, because it's quite likely you will at some point go back to digital in some way or other, be prepared to learn and appreciate what you've learned from doing stuff on film. It does help. Um, so it's not just, it, there are skills that are transferable between the two. So have fun with film. Look upon it as a way of exploring your photography. And if you must, of learning skills, because you'll need to do that. And then when you go back to digital, look at how your photography has changed again. Um, it really does help. I've met quite a few people have said this, that they've experimented with film. They've thought, that's an awful lot of faff. Um, I don't really want to do this anymore. I'm going to go back to digital. And then they found that their digital photography has improved. Now, as I said, some things like going out with a very small capacity card and other stuff like that, you can do digitally as well if you really want to. But above all, if you're thinking of film, be honest with what you want to get out of it. Be honest with the reasons for doing it. If you're somebody who just thinks, oh, it's cool to shoot film because I've seen some famous person shooting film. Well, I've got no real time for that sort of stuff. You know, I don't care who shoots film or shoots digitally or whatever. Makes no odds to me. It's what comes out at the end that counts. But Make sure you think about the photography bit of it. Anyway, enough of, uh, enough of that. Um, hopefully it's given a few ideas, even if it's just to look at film again and think, no, perhaps I won't. Um, so I'd love to see this, uh, this kit, not the lenses, mind you, uh, f have another life. So uh, do give us a shout. Um, yeah, I've only got the one if, if it suddenly proves remarkably popular, but... Hopefully this has been of some interest. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of stuff covering as much aspects of photography as I can. So if you've got ideas of that, you know, drop me a line, add a note or a question onto the video, and uh, there you go. So uh, thanks very much.